Welcome to the 25 Live online training video. Today I'll be going over how to properly put in a request for space on campus. First, I would like to remind you that no student can edit their own event. After you have put in a request, if you have any changes or need to cancel an event, you must email Heather Crandall. Again, if you need to cancel your event, you must email Heather Crandall with your event reference number. Please keep in mind that events not canceled within three business days of the event will incur a late cancellation fee of $75 for each large space and $25 for each small meeting room space. Events canceled with less than 24 hours notice will incur a fee of $100 for each large meeting room space and $50 for a small meeting room. If the group is a no-show, a fee of $100 for a large meeting room and $50 for each small meeting room space will be given to each organization. Okay, let's get started. First, you're gonna to go to 25live.gmu.edu. You will then sign into the system. Your username and password will be sent via email to you once you've completed all of the online trainings and student involvement has sent me a confirmation email. After you have logged in, you'll be taken to your homepage. There are a couple of boxes on the homepage that you should pay special attention to. The first is your events box. This will list all of the events where you are the requester. Once I have received the request, I will then change the scheduler to myself the second box is on the lower right hand side. This is a list of all your starred locations. A starred location means that you will have made it one of your favorite locations. I will show you later why this comes in handy when putting a request in. I do not recommend creating an event from the create an event button in the top middle of the screen. This will give you a blind shot in the dark as to what's available. So we are going to start by searching for a specific location. Click on the blue locations tab on the top right hand side of your page. Most of your events will take place in either the Hub or the Johnson Center. Let's search for a Johnson Center meeting room for this particular event. Type in the search box Johnson Center meeting room. All of the meeting rooms should then populate below. To make one of these rooms a favorite location, click on the star on the left hand side. Once the star is highlighted, that means that it is now one of your favorite locations. There are three different tabs that you can use to view the space. List, which just gives you the name of the space and features that come built in with the room. The availability tab shows us when the room is available. You can change the date by clicking on date and scrolling to your preferred date. Then click the refresh button. As you can see, none of the Johnson Center meeting rooms are available on the date that we have selected. Therefore, we will choose another date The new date that I have selected is August 6. It now shows the availability of JC rooms A through G. The green means that the room is not available. There is already a meeting in that space. If you hover over a white space, that means the room is available and you can click on it and it automatically takes you into the event wizard page. You're first going to start by entering the event name. Please be as specific as possible. For example, if your event is for Fall 2006 meetings, please label it as such. Do not just label your event meeting. Most of the time, the event name and the event title are the same. The only time it is, it is not is if the event is part of a week-long occurrence. 
such as International Week. Your event type will always be student organized. You will then type in the search box for your primary organization. Once you find it, you can star it and make it a favorite so it will automatically populate when you click down. After you've filled out this page, you will click Next. For your expected headcount, you always want to estimate higher than you anticipate the amount of people coming. Your event description needs to be very detailed to help the scheduler know about your event. We need to know who will be attending your event and what your event entails. If you misrepresent what your event entails, there will be consequences, which might entail not being able to reserve space on campus. If the scheduler feels that they do not have adequate information on the event, that might delay scheduling. After you've completed the event description, click Next. This is where you decide if your event is reoccurring. If it does, click Yes. Your event start and end date will always be the same date. If you would like pre-event time, that is your time in the space. So if your meeting starts at 4, and you want to get in there 30 minutes beforehand to make sure that the room is set up properly, you would add 30 minutes. Setup time is for the operations crew. The scheduler will add that time once you have submitted your request. Please keep in mind that most meeting rooms require an hour between meetings and the larger spaces require four hours. If you would like time after your meeting to make sure that everything's cleaned up, you would like post-event time. Then click Next. Always click Ad Hoc Repeats. Then you will click on the dates where you would like your event to repeat. You can click any day of the week you'd like, as many times a week as you would like. But it has to be within the same time frame. If you would like a meeting from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. instead of 4 to 5, you will have to create an entire new, new event. Now we already selected Johnson Center Meeting Room C from the previous locations tab. There is a conflict, however, on our September 2nd event. So we can show in our favorites what rooms are available for both those dates. Now that we've added it to the right hand side, you will see a green check mark showing that it is available so we will not request Johnson Center Meeting Room C. If you need an LCD projector, this is where you would request it. You would search by resource name, type in LCD, and then click LCD projector requested. You can star this resource so it's a favorite so when you go to the resource page it's already listed there. Please make sure you add this resource so I know if you need an LCD projector in the room. After this click next. 
you must complete all of the event attribute questions. You will always be listed as a scheduler and requester when you put in a request. The event comment section is where you are talking to the scheduler. This is not public information. This is where you will tell the scheduler the setup that you would like. Please keep in mind that certain rooms have different capacities. You have 50 people attending. I cannot do conference style for 50 people in hub room 4 and 5. It would have to be theater. and click next. You will read the affirmation and then click I agree, then click save. Your event has now successfully been saved. Down here is the event ID, also known as the event reference number. This is your key to everything regarding this particular event. If you have a question about this event, need to cancel it, or have any changes, you will email Heather Crandall with the event ID and let her know those changes. If there are any questions on scheduling or if you are having problems with the system, please email Heather Crandall immediately and she will set up an appointment with you to help you submit a successful request.